Hello everybody and welcome back to the old stream farm. So I'm already underway with the mowing uh, because we really do need to get quite a lot done today. Hello tree. Don't hit the tree. Uh, yes, we're going to cut this field and we're going to cut field number 29 which is our other grass field. It's bigger than this one but it is split into two separated by a river. Well, more like a stream. It's not very big. And then we're going to tell it and windrow it. Now I think we probably should replace the windrow that we currently have. I've still got it at least from a previous occasion. The teller is definitely big enough, that's absolutely fine. So we use that, but yeah, it would take a long time to do both the fields with that windrower. They're both currently fitted to the drop nose Matthew Ferguson just there. I probably should have returned the windrower a while ago, but the daily fees on that won't have been that high. But this is going to be so good. It's for the cows and it's for the sheep. Lots of delicious hay for them. The silage that we are going to need for the cows is going to come from the maize. So yeah, we've got three fields of corn maize growing and uh, yeah, that's going to be filling the pit up very, very nicely. I feel like I should cut through the middle of that field, but actually, yeah, it's not that big. And we do have a decent sized mower here. I will be doing videos on the new DLC. Just trying to fit them into a series. I know this one would have been perfect, but I've literally, at the time of recording, literally just received the email where I received the uh, DLC. And I'm aware of this video going out many days after recording, so unfortunately I can't really get it into this video, but hopefully into the next one. Right, so once this is done, we'll get over to 29, we'll get that cut as well. It really shouldn't take too long, but it is a little bit awkward. 29 does have some pretty tight corners in it. But there we go, that is this field finished. So we can now fold it up and we can take it over to 29. Such a fast job. Okay, it's just a quick hop across the road. A quick crash into the gate on both sides. Whoopsie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'll start with this bigger side over here. We'll get this done. And then we shall come back for that smaller side. Nice and fast. It's a great mower, this. I really am pleased that we have it. I don't think we'll be changing it. I suppose we could put a front mower on to make it even faster. But, yep, as a starting mower, it's fantastic. Right, so now just for this awkward corner. I love that we can just swap sides so easily. And there we go the field is cut so let's fold it up I'll take this back to the yard and then we can bring the tether across straight away because yeah it can be tethered I know we are supposed to leave it to dry we'll kind of make it around there yep but yeah because we don't have to we might as well make things progress a bit faster hello sheep two lovely fields or would it be technically three is fully divided so maybe it's three anyway yeah we'll put this back in the shed and then we can jump into that tractor but yeah actually I think I might as well even do the returning of the windrow straight away because I know I'm not going to use it chickens oh yeah how are they doing 
with their eggs. So we've almost got another full pallet. I know the price for eggs is still quite good. So the sooner we sell the next few pallets, the better. Right, uh, so it came out of that shed there. Uh, no, which one? This one. One of these. But I think I'm going to put it into this shed over here for now. Next to the forage wagon. Because the bales can be tucked away in the corner, just there. Not that there's going to be that many. Yes, it's... Yeah, it's, despite it being two fields, it's not going to generate that much hay. Okay. So I suppose I should pull forward, and then we can drop that off. Put it on the back. And get cracking with the tether. Brilliant. Yeah, really, really good working with. And it's always satisfying watching that grass being fluffed up. The way it throws it all. Good fun. So I think you get the idea. It's going to be pretty fast. Get both of the fields done. And then I think probably... At the end of the time lapse, I'll see you over at the store where we'll be picking up the windrow, and it's most likely going to be that green one. I forget the brand name, but the green one where it's going to bring in two sides into the centre. Should I go with that? I think, yeah, I've, I have cut right through onto the road. But we might as well use it, it's ours. There we go. It's great. And by the end of this episode, we need to have all of this hay stacked up in the barn, nice and neatly, uh, ready for feeding to the cows and to the sheep in the near future. But I think at the moment they both are okay because I gave them hay yesterday. But as we get more and more cows, we're going to need more and more hay. And eventually, the cows will be fed total mixed ration as well. As promised, here we are. So it cost almost a thousand pounds to rent this, which might sound expensive, but that's only about half the price of buying one bale. We're going to be producing quite a few bales, and they're going to be bigger, much bigger than the ones you can buy. So it's actually cheap. It's going to be great to be able to do this. Yes, I've got used to the traffic not even looking before they pull out. They don't have the intelligence. Okay, so yeah, this time I start with 29. Then we can finish with one. And then we can finally bail them, bring the lorry across, and get the bales moved. I could actually uh, use the auto loading trailer on the lorry. We don't have to bring the telehandler as well. It might be nice to try it out for the first time. I really don't know how many bales there's going to be. It's very hard to judge, especially as the bales are so big. Of course, also bearing in mind this field was lacking nitrogen, it had nothing, so it can't be that good. But then, if you look at it another way, we haven't put any money into it. So it is 100% profit, pretty much. In fact, it is, because, yeah, the resale value is uh, of the field is the same. So it's 100% profit. The drop nose can run this without any issues at all. I think, yeah, despite being uh, nitrogen-free, had no fertilizer, 
that swath is still quite decent. It looks really tall. Looks very good. There's our first lap. The other side would be a bit more tricky. Just go to the corner over there where the bridge is. I'll probably have to reverse up to it. But it should be overall fairly painless. And then we can put the baler onto the 8S. It's always good to have that extra power on the baler. And we can see where we stand. Not bad. Um, I guess I should also do some first person view. I do like these tracks and I love the detailing inside. It's very true to life. It's very good. Okay, I take back what I said about the height of the swath in the other field looking really good. Yeah, these look much bigger, especially the headland for some reason. It looks absolutely massive. Uh, so but this field was actually uh, fertilized. It was showing 100% nitrogen. So it should be 100% better, really. But we're almost there. We're almost ready to start the bailing. This is one of those episodes where we get a lot done, but it's all in the same place just the way it is. We've got to keep doing different uh, processes in the same fields. But actually it is pretty fun to be able to see in the same episode a field turning from a growing field to a harvested field or in this case a, a cut and baled field and then uh, yeah see it starting to grow again. So at the beginning of the episode you see the crop growing and at the end of the episode you see it all stored in the shed. Lovely. And this beats buying bales uh, by a long way. We do not want to be buying bales. I bought two because we had to, but that's the end of it. Right, so I don't know if we need the windrow for anything else. I don't think we do. So actually that can be returned. I know it's silly to rent it for like six, somewhere between six and 12 minutes, but it's just the way it is. Eventually we'll own one. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> I've wrapped myself around the wall. Let's put it there nicely. Um, so, yes, the 8S is here. I wonder if I can put that further into the shed, actually. That'd be better. We don't want the fertilizer getting wet. Do we have a cover? No, we don't. That would cost extra. So now we can grab the Heston baler, which I think is in the shed over there. Yep. And this is going to reveal how many bells we're going to make. I just don't know, because it's like 11,500 litres in each. And the fields aren't massive. So I think I'm going to guess at 7. I'm going to say 7. That's including what we have in the baler already. I would like to think that I'm wrong, and it's actually more than that. So what I'll actually say is 7 but probably more, not less. Uh, it'll probably end up being uh, much less now, I've said that, but anyway, we can hope. So that is the first bell created, but it's no surprise, it was already over two thirds done. There's just something fun about Heston's, these big bales, I just think they are just more fun. They're certainly easier, Oh, I wonder if that lorry trailer, which can also load it, is actually compatible with Heston Bales. Well, if it isn't, it does not matter one bit, because we have the telehandler. 
That's the first one dropped out the back. I think we'll see four, three or four, dropped on the ground in this field. Yeah, I'd say four, which means my guess at seven is a little bit low. Although, yeah, having said that, this field is much better than the other field. determined to drop this last bell. I could unload it. Uh, we've got a few bits here and there, but I don't think it's going to go. I think we're going to be taking it to the other field, which would seem silly, so I think I will unload it. Uh, which means that we did get four in this field, but it would have only been three. Yeah, because I've just dropped those two, uh, which really leaves very little being transferred to this field. So if we've got four from that field, including what we already had in the baler, I'm going to say three from this field. And I think that might be pushing it. But if we do get three, then it means we will have a total of seven, which means I'll have been correct. But yeah, that rarely happens. I have hit the nail on the head before, but yeah, it is uh, quite a rare occurrence. Oh, I didn't realise there was actually a fence there. It's a wise idea. Oh, it even goes through the water. It's a good boundary marker, but those posts are going to rot. Luckily, the other side is easier. There's more space. But there's nothing else I can really do with this side, because it, like, if I turn it into an arable crop, it's then still too small for the combine. So, well, I suppose trees. Trees would be a a good thing to put in, but this series isn't going to be long enough to be waiting for trees to grow. Okay. It's going well. Let's hope for those three bales. I'm going to admit uh, my hope is fading pretty fast, but we can't give up until it's actually happened. Would you look at that? We've got seven. We've certainly got seven. Um, eight. Yeah, eight and a bit left. Well, actually, 73% left in the baler. Let's just confirm that. Make sure I haven't miscounted. I'm pretty sure there are eight. Uh, yes, there are eight. Wow. So I was wrong and right, because uh, I did say seven, but if anything, there'll be more than seven. And there was more than seven. And also, if you do take into account what we already have in the, had in the baler when we started, uh, yes, it was pretty much exactly eight. Eight and a bit. So now we can move them. And I think, yes, I will just take the Merlot and the lorry, load them up, and then we can put them into the shed nicely. Hello, chickens. Yes, I would try and avoid all the chickens, but obviously this yard is totally scattered with them. They are everywhere, and that's where the bales are going, to the right of the mower. I think I can probably get away with keeping this baler attached to the tractor. It's more for when we do the straw bales, that extra trailer, the tandem trailer. So, the mower, oh, it's still over here, crikey, I better get it brought back. This is from yesterday when I sold the silage. So, yeah, I'll see you over there. Oh, it weighed, what was it, 25 tonnes when we brought it in? It's now 18.2. We're back. And I realise it looks a bit messy with these IBCs here. So we'll stack them. Well, we'll just push them into here, actually. I won't stack them. It's better than being in the middle of the yard. 
My pallet fork I believe is in those bushes just there, so I'll have to retrieve that. But first, we shall take the trailer off in the second bay, just over here. Actually, if the other trailer does fit to this Merlot, because this Merlot seems really multi-purpose, uh, looks like we can attach most things to it, then we could just take the other trailer instead of the lorry as well. As I said, that's more for straw. Okay. That's good. Yeah, if it doesn't attach to it, that's fine. I kind of feel like it will do, actually. I really do. This is going to work. Yes. I just have that feeling. That's perfect. It makes it much easier just using one machine. Okay, and my pallet fork, as mentioned, is just there, <laughs> so it's facing the wrong way. Oh dear. I've pulled it round. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to actually finish with this field closest to us. I'm going to load 29 up first. Only four bales, but they are heavy. Right, so take the trailer off somewhere around here. Should be adequate. Yep. And now just make sure I don't load right on the very back first. We need to have some weight on the front. And this Merlot does have that incredible weight system so we can pick up two maybe even three it picked up two no problem at all previously uh, although I'm not going to go higher than two we just don't need to and as the pallet forks really don't like the Heston hay bales I really should get a bale fork it's funny because it's not a problem with the Heston straw bales it's only the hay bales it doesn't like so I don't understand that at all. Um, we can still move them, but yeah, with the straw bales it just sinks straight into them and then doesn't get stuck. But sadly, the same can't be said for these. We're free. Yes, we will have to get a bell fork. Maybe if I lift them a bit higher, if I if I put the the tie in a bit higher up. Nope. Okay. Yeah, enough of this. I'll go and get a new one. Well, as it turns out, we already had one. So I've just picked it up in the yard. No point in buying another one. And now we can load the final four. That's so much better. It's always funny because yeah, I always say that uh, I prefer the pallet fork for bales. It just seems to work better in this game. But clearly for Heston's, it doesn't. So we have to use the proper attachment. But that's fine, whatever works best. I've put those bales in the middle. Uh, I did originally have them on the front, but that was a bit too much. With the weight that we have on the back of the Merlot already, um, it was making the front wheels lift up a bit. It wasn't too bad, but obviously you don't want to be <laughs> jumping up into the air. This is the reason why I said I prefer the pallet forks. But that's uh, it's getting stuck too. They just like to get stuck. It's another two. Just don't want the trailer to lift up. I don't think it will do though. It would be surprising. Oh please. It, it, it does not like me today. These bells are really 
kicking up quite a fuss. Okay, you go to the bottom then. Not the floor. Good grief. At least it came off. And now I've got the final ones which can obviously stay on the bale spike. There's no point starting another bale fight. So we have 92,000 litres. Not bad. Not bad at all. So now we must store it in the shed for the future. And that is going to be enough for a very long time. So I will drop off the trailer here. And I will unload in the shed. I'm not too sure why it's uh, so troublesome today, the unloading and loading, but it's just the way it is, I guess. Bales have always been a bit sticky in this game. But today they seem ultra sticky. Somebody must have spilt syrup on them. These, this one can hopefully go on top of this one. Yep. Providing they pull out. Yes? No? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll just put it on the ground. The ground has more resistance. Although not much. Okay, I'm going to time lapse this, it's clearly painful. Well, it may not have been pretty, but they're in the shed. And that's all that matters. But yeah, that is, I would say that is the most trouble I've ever had with bales in FS22. Uh, why is they getting stuck like that? I really don't know, because I've moved Hessens many times before and they've been fine. Anyway, yeah, I'll put this over here, and I think we'll call it a day. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And until next week, See you again very soon. Bye for now.